Maybe the most honest laugh there he's ever laughed. He's getting a reaction, right? And always remember, that's... Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Philip, and I'm a counsellor psychologist helping to shine a light on all things mental health. If you haven't already, remember to like this video, subscribe, and comment to keep the conversation going. This video is going to be about the character, the Joker. And I'm going to watch some clips from the film, the Joker, because I want to give you an understanding of why people act the way they do. What's happened in their lives to make them become a villain, to be evil, to be horrible, or to have a different point of view than many other people. So, let's get on with it, shall we? Garbage piling up every day. Even the nicest sections of the city are looking like slums. Health Commissioner Edward O'Rourke is declaring a citywide state of emergency for the first time in decades. There's no need to wait until somebody <laughs> dies or comes down with typhoid fever. It's already a serious situation. It's something that affects almost everyone in the city, no matter who they are. Hmm. I love the way that they have the sound over of the radio because it's giving us an understanding of the mental state of the character here, who happens to be the Joker. It's saying that there's rubbish everywhere, we haven't got the freedom, we can't open our shops, we can't live our life because we've got all this stuff going on. It gives us an understanding of maybe what he's going through, all this stuff in his head cluttering in his brain, unable to feel that they have, or he has, any room to maneuver. I mean, look at him here, he's, he's having to smile, he's got his banner, he's trying to advertise this store which is shutting down, and yet everyone is passing him by. No one's giving him the time of day. Could you imagine living this life where, maybe it's not just at work where he feels like that, maybe it's throughout his whole life he's never been seen and respected. Bro, what's up with your shoes, bro? Nice up, You're gonna be a clown, at least you can be a good one, you know that, right? Ah! Hey! I love this film. Everything is around you. The business going out of sale. Everything must go. He literally can't even go to work. And he, he can't even live his life without something bad happening. Someone doing something which hurts him. can't even chase someone down that's hurt him or taken something from him because he's going to get beaten up and hit. And that's a physical punishment there, but it feels like throughout this character's life, throughout the Joker's life, he has been abused and punished, not just physically, but also emotionally and mentally too. <laughs> <laughs> what a powerful scene you think is he laughing or crying he's just sh showing his emotion it feels like that emotion isn't something to be laughed at it just feels like an expression a freedom to just voice everything that's going on in his head which is pain, suffering, turmoil, depression, sadness, anger, fury, it feels, is coming out here. It doesn't feel like he's got much to laugh at, does it? Did you bring it with you? Arthur. Can I see it? Last time, mm -hmm. I asked you to bring your journal. What's in that journal? He's obviously nervous. Can I see it? His legs shaking and twitching. That's uh, interesting. When your legs shake like that and go up and down, they call it happy legs. But really, it's just an expression of uh, an anxiety, something you're waiting to happen or something you're scared of happening. So if you're at a table and you see someone's 
whole upper body is still and their legs are just bouncing up and down. It's a sign that there's something going on, something they want to say or something they want to do or something they're scared is going to happen to them. I've been using it as a, as a journal, but also as a joke diary, funny thoughts or observations. I think I told you I'm pursuing a career in stand-up comedy. No, you didn't. In that statement, it's quite normal when people laugh at something that really means something to them, something that makes them feel sad. Instead of connecting to it and explaining it, they say, oh, it's silly, I didn't mean to, or ha ha ha, isn't that funny? When it's something that's really powerful and something which I can tell means something to them, and this counsel, this, this, this professional in this scene can see that there's something here. I mean, obviously, it's, it's highlighted. He's gone over that statement again and again and again because it's something that means a lot to him, yet it feels un he's unable to connect to that feeling because maybe it hurts a bit too much. I wonder really what he's trying to show the world from writing that down. How does it feel to have to come here? Does it help to have someone to talk to? I think I felt better when I was locked up in the hospital. And have you thought more about why you were locked up? Who knows? It was too much to bear for him. I was wondering if you could ask the doctor to increase my medication. Arthur, you're on seven different medications. Surely they must be doing something. Surely they must be doing something. Almost like they don't believe him, but he feels the way he does. He's asking for help. He's using medication to say, please help me. You say, you're on enough. There's nothing more we can do for you. Just pushing his feelings away. Maybe she should ask, why it is that he feels he needs more medication? What's going on for him right now? That's the sort of question that I'd want to ask. What does he need the medication for? What's wrong? No matter what, he's just told he is wrong. The kid was looking at him. He's trying to make a, a fun, a, a joke about it and have some fun. And yet the mother won't even listen to him. It feels like no one listens to him. No one gets him. No one wants to get him. No one can be bothered with him. Just imagine what that does to someone's mental health. Someone's sense of self-esteem and happiness. You can't act in any way that you want to, and no one's there helping you when you're asking for it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have a... <laughs> That is, is, is essentially the same as Tourette's, essentially doing something or acting in a certain way, whether it's a twitch, saying things, or laughing in, in this case, 
when there's a sudden urge to based on an emotional response to a situation. So when someone with Tourette gets really anxious or scared, that's when the, those tics or, or saying something will come out when they feel the most uncomfortable. In that situation, I wonder what it is that the latter is hiding because in that just then he was maybe upset, dejected, angry that he's been told that he is wrong. And just then, like that, the laughter occurs. Can I ask you a question? Sure. How does someone wind up in here? Have they all, all the people committed crimes? Oh well, yeah, some have. You know, some are just crazy, pose dangers to themselves and others. Some just got nowhere else to go. Don't know what to do, you know? Yeah, I hear you, brother. Mm. Being isolated for being mentally ill. Something that's worrying you, yet you feel that you, well, the only place for you is a, a mental health hospital because there's nowhere else for you to go. You know, people commit crimes and they end up there. People have, as he says, nowhere else to be and they end up there. It's almost like, no matter what happens, if you have a mental illness, you haven't got that support with you, it, you, know, you, you end up being ostracized by the world. Nowhere else to go, nowhere else to be. It's, it's a really sad situation, isn't it? That you feel that you, know, you can't get the help that you need. Last time I ended up taking down on some people, I thought it was gonna bother me, but it really hasn't. What's that? I fucked up. And did some bad shit. <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about. It's so hard to just try and be happy all the time. Hey, uh, listen, man, I'm, I'm just an administrator. Trying to be happy all the time. That's what we're expected to be, happy all the time. And when the world isn't treating you the way that you'd hope it would treat you, or things don't go to plan, why is it that you have to feel that you have to be happy? It's not realistic, you know, bad stuff happens. It's a signpost, sadness is a signpost telling you there's something not right and something needs changing. In the same way here, him having to be happy all the time has meant that he doesn't make those changes that he has to make. He, people out of your life, changing your life circumstances, going back to school, doing something different because he's expected just to be happy. And even when he's feeling miserable, just be happy. Happiness is a signpost telling you everything's right. So if everything isn't right, you shouldn't feel happy. You should feel anything but happy until you do something which makes you happy. When you take an active step in your life which leads to you feeling fulfilled. That's what your emotions are trying to help you with. And right here, he's saying, oh, I'm tired of just pretending to be happy all the time. You know, when he says that, it makes me feel sad because he feels desolate. Like, he's been given a game to play, but he hasn't been given the rules. And narcissistic personality disorder. Mm. Was found guilty of endangering the welfare of her own child. Right. You said she's your mother? Uh, I'm sorry, man. Like I said, I can't release these records, you know, without uh, proper forms. I, I could get in trouble. Look, if you want to bring your mom in here to sign, that'll be much easier, but I can't, I can't let this go without it, her signature. It's so hard because he knows there's something wrong. The clerk knows there's something wrong and something that he can't tell. But yet, you know, he hasn't been trained what to do. As he said, he's just a clerk. He just gets the paperwork and gives it to the relevant person. Whereas in this situation, all he wants is to get the answers that he needs. And yet, here's someone else telling him, no, I, don't, I can't give you the answer you want. I've got it here, written in front of me, on this piece of paper. Yeah, no, you gotta wait. I'm not gonna tell you because maybe it's bad news, maybe there's something wrong, maybe it's something that he doesn't feel comfortable sharing. It's just another situation where it doesn't seem very fair.
and you know, I can really start to gain a picture as to why he turned so aggressive and decided on the decisions he did because everyone's telling him no. So he's probably thinking to himself, I need to take some action here. I need to do something which leads me to feel in control. film is so good he's running through the hallways surrounded by inpatients who aren't feeling too well and they've been assigned to a mental health hospital and he's running through and you can just imagine in his head this is what's going on he's got all these these issues he's facing everything's going on and, and he's running through the hospital and you can imagine him running through his mind in exactly the same way the imagery is magnificent but you can really see here what he's going through all this all this turmoil all this aggression all this stress in his life all he wants is an answer someone to help him to pick out the right way in order to live his life and to to, to give him the, the framework and the the, the, the safety to be him. And that starts with answers, right? And this is why he's reacted in that way. Do you see also when he's being passive, he's playing by the rules and it's all for him going badly. He can't, he, well, he doesn't feel that he has any power or control over his life. He's just walking through, playing the game, following the rules, yet not getting anywhere. And here he is, not following the rules, grabbing that, that, that document and running away with it, and it's the first time he's got anywhere and got what he wanted, which is some answers. Do you see here how, for him, playing by the rules and not getting that support that he needs has left him feeling desolate and isolated, which is why he's had to, to break the law and do what he had to do. Now, that doesn't mean it's right to break the law and do that, but maybe it's giving us an answer as to why the Joker ended up being the Joker, committing crimes, because it's the only way he could feel Validated, rewarded, and in control of his life. We went over this, Penny. You adopted him. We have all the paperwork right here. That's not true. Thomas had that all made up. So it stayed our secret. You also stood by one of your boyfriends repeatedly abused your adopted son and battered you. <laughs> and look, there's there's that laughter again when he's found out some really troubling news he's unable to get angry and feel, feel upset so laughter comes and fills the gap such a sad story isn't it because those are the foundations of how he's created his his world view of being abused by his mother's, or adopted mother's boyfriends. And even his mother, who he loves and cares for and trusted, never told him the truth, that he was adopted. Someone that he, he all he wants is maybe the only person that he feels in control or maybe the only person he feels connected to has lied to him. He's got no one in that moment. He doesn't feel that he can rely on anyone to give him the safety that he needs. And it's, no, and it's really not surprising looking at the Joker, reading this document, why he's feeling all this, this, this anger, which is coming out as laughter, because he doesn't know how to deal with it. It shocked him. The only truth that he felt was true is actually a lie. Just imagine how hurt he feels in that moment. <laughs> Your son was found tied to a radiator in your filthy apartment 
malnourished with multiple bruises across his body and severe trauma to his head. I never heard him cry. He's always been such a happy little boy. There was sadness in that life. Look at the anger. It's so sad, isn't it? He's completely dissociated himself from all that abuse. He's taken it outside of himself so he could live and survive. Forgetting about what happened, hoping it would just go away because he was unable to control it and to take anything from that experience. So he's just gone, it's all gone over there. I don't want to ever think about that ever again. But having it over there just trickles into his life and stops him from ever feeling that confident, self-assured version of himself, which allows him to feel empowered. Yeah, that's not funny, Arthur. That's not the kind of humor we do on this show. Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. It's just, you know, it's been a rough few weeks, Murray. <laughs> ever since I killed those three Wall Street guys. Okay, I'm waiting for the punchline. There is no punchline. Maybe, maybe the first time here, the Joker's actually been himself, actually told the truth, hoping for a reaction. And he feels you know, comfortable in that because he's done something and it's something that he's taking control of. Okay, what he's done isn't right, but at least he can say, I've done something that I've wanted to do. And look, everyone, this is what I've done. I'm going to tell the truth for the first time. And by him telling the truth and getting a reaction, it's more than he's ever had any other time. Just think about that mother on the bus with, with, a, with her child saying, stop, don't do anything. Get away from me. I don't want to talk to you anymore. And here he is getting all the attention from you know, the world on this talk show. You're serious, aren't you? You're telling us you killed those three young men on the subway? Mm-hmm. And why should we believe you? You got nothing left to lose. Nothing left to lose. Nothing can hurt me anymore. <laughs> My life is nothing but a comedy. Well, let me get this straight. You think that killing those guys is funny? I do. And I'm tired of pretending it's not. I killed those guys because they were awful. Everybody is awful these days. It's enough to make anyone crazy. Okay, so that's it. You're crazy. That's your defense for killing three young men? No. They couldn't carry a tune to save their lives. Oh, why is everybody so upset about these guys? If it was me dying on the sidewalk, you'd walk right over me. I pass you every day and you don't notice me. But these guys, what, because Thomas Wayne went and cried about them on TV? You have a problem with Thomas Wayne. Too. Yes, I do. Have you seen what it's like out there, Murray? Do you ever actually leave the studio? Everybody No one's seen yelled. him. As he said, if he was dying on the sidewalk, everyone would walk over him and forget that he even existed. This is his chance to feel empowered in that moment for people to really see him in the same way that people don't understand him because they've never had to live his life. And he's trying to show them that there's something not right here. Again, what he did isn't right. But to be left all the time at the bottom of the barrel, you can really see why people get so upset and angry with the way their lives are going. Again, this is what he's trying to show him that he doesn't understand, no one understands what he's been going through his whole life. You sound like you're making excuses for killing those young men. Not everybody, and I'll tell you this, not everyone is awful. You're awful, Me? I'm awful? Oh yeah, how am I awful? Playing my video. Inviting me on the show. You just wanted to make fun of me. You're just like the rest of them. You don't know the first thing about me, pal. Look what happened because of what you did, what it led to. There were riots out there. 
Two policemen are in critical condition. You're <laughs> laughing. You're laughing. Someone was killed today because of what you did. I know. Maybe the first time he's ever seen that something that he has done, the Joker, has done is actually being, being seen. He's being seen in this moment. This is a justification for him that it was the right thing to do. It wasn't the right thing to do, but for him in that moment, in that crazed state, he's going, I need to feel a win here. I need to feel that something I do makes a difference in the world. Because if we're living life never having anything well, go right for us or, or, or feeling that we have any say in what goes on or we have no impact in the world, which is a passenger on this on this merry-go-round, then you're always going to feel you know, desolate, depressed, upset, disempowered. This is maybe the first time that the Joker has ever felt anything good. It's like he's had any control in his life. It's come to the consequence of doing something bad, but it gives us an understanding about why the Joker does bad things. Because he sees that he does something bad, he gets recognition for it. He does something else bad, he feels empowered. This is the cycle he's going through in his life, which is where habits come from. Feeling that you're doing something and feeling good afterwards. That's why people drink, do drugs, do dangerous things, as well as good, nice things too. Because they do something dangerous and they get a thrill from doing it. They feel empowered from doing it. And that means that it's more likely that they'll do it again in this situation. The Joker's done something bad and he's got some sort of validation from it, which is why he keeps on doing bad things. That's his validation source. Otherwise, what else has he got going back to living in a, a dive flat with no money, no hope, and no chance of anything different? How about another joke, Murray? No, I think we've had enough of your jokes. What do you get? I don't think so. When you cross I think a mentally ill loner with a it. society that abandons him and beats him like trash! Call the police, I'll man. tell you what you get! Call the police! You get what you fucking deserve! <laughs> funny his legs are twitching again and that twitching legs as we saw at the right at the start is that that angst that anxiety of in the start him showing his diary to the mental health worker but in this situation what's going to happen here and then it was a sign of anxiety which he had no way of controlling here he's used that anxiety for an effect and that effect you know is is that you know he, he's he's killed a man but you can see that the anxiety still in his legs, still going on. With all that, that, that stress and tension just, just ready to burst out of him. What's so funny? <laughs> it's just like, you want to tell just think of a joke. <laughs> 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 maybe now he's seeing that no one will understand his desolation no one will understand what he's going through that laugh is his only place to feel safe but that safety comes in at a cost because he only feels safe when he's alone he can't share that story because he knows that he's on his own there's nowhere else for him to go there's no one that's ever going to understand what he's going through so he'd rather just stay locked in his own sense of isolation, but feel empowered through that. Which means that he'll never get better. But he's happy with that. that. Doesn't mean it's right, but he's happy living that life. At least he feels in control of his own, his own state of being, which is something which he hasn't felt throughout the whole movie. And look, this gives us an understanding about why he's created this world and why the Joker becomes so formidable throughout the DC universe because he's egocentric and he just looks after himself through all the bad stuff that happens it gives us an understanding about why the Joker acts the way he does a motivation so it gives you an insight into what goes on for him why he's so mentally ill and, you know and, and this is how we create all the ways that we understand the world based on our past and some of us have been through more traumas than others but we've all been through something in our lives but it gives us an understanding about why we connect to the world in the way we do based on those experiences the only theory that's transitioned from the 
philosophy of counseling into the science of psychology is one called the internal working model. Essentially, every experience we have creates a model or a way of relating to the world. And we've really seen there why the Joker is related to the world in the way he has. And it might be worth you thinking about why you relate to certain situations the way you do. Why some people get anxious about doing one thing and some people find it exciting. Because here we see the Joker's done it very well. He's created a new way to relate to the world. I'm not saying that the Joker's done it in the right way, but it's in a different way. And we all have that ability to adapt and change and be the version of ourselves we want to be. This is a rather darker version of himself, but it's a self that he has created to offset all that emotional discontent. And that's the end of the video today. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope that I've given you an understanding about why it is The Joker is such an amazing movie and really is an example of how situations in life can cause us to act and think and feel certain things throughout our life. Remember, if you've got any other videos that you want me to do, any other films that you want me to discuss, why don't you leave them in the comment section and I can do those videos in the future. Also, if you haven't already, remember to like this video, subscribe to see plenty more to come. Also, why don't you leave me a comment pushing the conversation on. Let me know what you thought about this video and also about the Joker film. I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.